I just want a second look. Yeah. There's something about this one, isn't there? Familiar somehow. We think we're stuck in a specific fragment of time that we've been repeating that same fragment over and over. But the flirting's over, Sherlock. Daddy's had enough. It before TV reviews and connections of mine. The Lord of the Rings Rings of Power has dropped all of its episodes for season two on Amazon Prime. It once again picks up the story of the Second Age of Middle Earth with uh, the, uh, with once the three rings of power have been forged. Now Sauron is focused on forging even more rings to focus on the seven uh, for the dwarf lords and the nine for men and. All along the line, uh, Gladriel is trying to uh, to persuade the elves to uh, confront Sauron uh, at all costs. Meanwhile, on the island of Numenor, we have uh, political strife among the faithful versus the forces uh, opposed to that line of, uh, line of thinking. And we also have the Harfoots and the Strangers finding their way to the land of Rune, in order to find the uh, identity of the stranger and where he belongs in the world of Middle Earth. Now, this video review will contain spoilers of Rings of Power Season 2, as well as certain other things. I'll be doing my spoiler-free thoughts first and foremost, though, so just so you know that most of the spoilers are later on in this review. But first things first, let's get into some spoiler-free talk on Rings of Power Season 2. Is it a good season of television? Is it... Uh, uh, better than the first season is a good Lord of the Rings material. Um, as I would say, this is if you were a fan of Lord of the Rings, if um, if maybe if you're like me, you tried to read the Silmarillion and you made it through it, but you know it made your head hurt a little bit. Uh, maybe you've gone back to read the appendices, the back of uh, your book of Lord of the Rings. Um, there's a lot of lore explored in this season, as in the previous season, that I think you'll have a, a fun time. Uh, analyzing, and, you know, as with always in the prequel, you're always trying to figure, all right, well, how, you know, how do these things come to pass? How does this character uh, get to this place? How does this place become this place that we know it is in the Lord of the Rings books? Um, all that stuff is present in this, and if you're looking solely for that, then I think you're going to be entertained by it. Uh, however, I think, much like with season one, and probably even more so uh, in this season, there's just a lot going on in this uh, in this season, and I think that's you know both a help and a hurt to this. I think, I mean, for instance, the uh, for my money, the best um, mystery that you know the best storyline of the multiple storylines going because really there's the three, right? There's you know Galadriel and the elves, there's uh, Elendil and uh, and Numenor. And you have uh, Nori and Poppy and the Stranger. Those are the three main ones. Last season, I personally thought that Nori and Poppy were the uh, the most interesting characters and the best storyline in uh, the previous season because we didn't. I mean, we knew event. You know, in the, the grand scheme of things, that the Harfoots would. You know, from the ancestors of the Hobbits, they'll eventually land in the Shire. But this part, we never. We have no idea what this part of their history. Is like so. Exploring this is interesting. We have no idea who Nori and Poppy are uh, even are. So you know, uh, so it's interesting to follow them and get uh, wrapped up in their stories. With the other stories, yes, it's interesting on a you know a Tolkienite um, intellectual level to see. All right, well, all right. There's a seal door. We know where he's going to end up. How does he get from A to B? All right. All right. There's Galadriel. How do we get? How does he get from? Uh, how does she get from A to B? You know, there's all that stuff, but. Um, the Nori and Poppy and the Stranger uh, storyline was by far the most interesting uh, bit for my money for season one. Season two, you get a little bit of them, you, you know, especially in the early episodes. But by you know, especially at the midpoint and by the end, they get kind of pushed aside, and you don't see very much of them. Um, they are useful for introducing the um, the first live action appearance of the character of Tom Bombadil. Uh, who is a character in the story uh, in the book that um, is a really odd character in the book, so I'm not surprised why he's never been adapted up until now. 
Um, and he's kind of an odd character in the series, so you got that going for him. But aside from that, they get kind of get pushed aside, and you don't really see very much of them. And I think uh, that's sort of a symptom of the problem of um, whereas before you had these three storylines, uh, now you get split into more like four or five storylines in this because, you know, Elrond and Gladwell get separated. Um, Sildor and Lendil get separated. Um, and, you know, the Heart, yeah, and uh, the, the Stranger and Norian Poppy get separated. So all of a sudden you have six disparate storylines trying to uh, to get the fly for screen time at this point, and inevitably one's going to take the lion's share over the others. And I think that's a, that's a shame, because what does get focused on, yes, has some narrative heft to it. Um, you know, I will say it involves the, um, the elven city of Oregion, but the... Uh, I feel like this, it, it shouldn't exclude all the other interesting things that are going on. And probably the biggest sin that this season, and really it's more of a series uh, as a whole, and this season just happens to bear some of the, the burden of it, is that you know, they, go, they went into this, A, during the writer's strike, so they had that to deal with, and also they're filming a lot of this uh, during the COVID lockdown, so that didn't help as well. Uh, but also, during production, they were going at such a pace that they didn't have a script a lot of the time. So, And that is really evident uh, in the way things are paced and uh, how certain characters tend to appear and disappear and explanations, just, things just kind of happen and they don't really uh, explain some things. And it feels like... Um, you know, writers probably were uh, maybe on a deadline and they have to reach, some, uh, reach for certain things. And I'll mention this in my um, in my spoiler talk, but there are a couple instances in one episode in particular with two different storylines that felt like, all right, well, we're running out of time and we're out of ideas. Let's just crib from this and hope no one knows this. Well, one thing I noticed, I'm probably not the only one who noticed these certain things. And that's sort of a... Sort of a bond on this. And uh, also, Amazon has publicly stated that they've committed to five seasons of Rings of Power. They know they're going to get five seasons of it. They re- reaffirmed that they were going to have five seasons of Rings of Power this. And so because of that, it feels like that gives the writers and the showrunners license to take their time developing certain things, which in other, uh, in other ways would be fine, but when you're when someone is really only watching the show for um, the token lore, and when you already, you know, when they already acknowledge that, you know, they're having to fast forward the timeline of certain uh, events within the lore of the token verse here, uh, like, you know, certain events in this timeline are happening, you know, the way it's shown in the show, the show is probably like within a few months. Maybe, whereas in the book, it's probably more like years or decades or more that, you know, things pass between one and the other events, so they're compressing the timeline a bit. But even then, it feels like they're taking their sweet, sweet time trying to get to certain events. Like, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's not uncommon knowledge that uh, in Season 1, they're already teasing the fact that Numenor, you know, is going to be destroyed. It's going to be flooded. All right. So we know that's going to happen. That's in the books. You know, it's not a spoiler or anything. That's we know that's going to happen. Well, it doesn't happen in season two. I'll just put that out there. It doesn't happen in season two. I am having a hard time believing that's gonna, even going to happen in season three. It's probably going to be a season four thing. So we're already uh, in this point where you know things are being dragged out a lot, and also the focus. Like I said, the focus. It feels like you're focusing on non mysteries. Like, you know, you're trying to artificially create this, this you know, uh, this water cooler fodder, so, uh, so to speak, where it's like, uh, whereas last season it was like, oh, who is the stranger? Who is the stranger? Where they, they pretty much all but confirmed who the stranger is by the end of season one. But even in season two, they're already thought, all right, who is the stranger? Who is the stranger? Who is the other person? Who is the other person? It's like, enough already. Just, just let us go. And then let's, you know, I get that's kind of the bread and butter of these sorts of 
you know, weekly streaming, uh, re-streaming shows sort of thing. You gotta keep, keep people talking, but this feels weak, in my opinion. But all of these, all of that being said, I can't say that this is like the worst bit of television I've ever seen, and I do enjoy the Tolkien-esque uh, elements of it and being immersed in that universe. But if you're just a casual observer, I can't help but think that you're going to have a rough time with this show, especially with the pacing and um, the inconsistencies with uh, with attention to the different storylines. So if I was going to give Rings of Power Season 2 a letter grade, I would say this is a B-. minus. Um, and that might be, you know, just my, my generosity putting it a little bit more above average than others would, but, um, I gotta say, there, there are definitely some issues that I really genuinely hope that they are able to clean up by the next season. So, those are my main spoiler-free thoughts on Rings of Power Season 2. Now let's get some spoiler talk as certain plot developments and character arcs that may seem familiar to you and where you may have seen them before. So, like I said, there's really only two, there's two main story beats that I feel like were pretty blatantly cribbed from other sources, and they both happen in the same episode. One is involving the storyline with Tom Bobadil and the Stranger, which, you know, by the time you see Tom Bobadil wearing, you know, Gandalf, the Gandalf-style wizard's hat walking by, it's like, and they've already referenced, oh, you know, Poppy's saying, oh, he, he needs to find a Gand, and it's like, Oh my gosh, come on. All right, fine, it's Gandalf. I didn't want him to be Gandalf. I wanted him to be one of, him, with him to be one of the blue wizards, but fine, we're, we're making him Gandalf. All right, but they drag out to the Gandalf reveal so, so long, and it's like, why? But regardless of that, you know, we get to this point where Tom Bobbitt is leading the stranger to uh, this this cl- this uh, this crevice full of dead trees. It's like, all right, in there you're... Uh, your staff lies, and your destiny lies, and, but, and, um, he's like, oh, but my, my friends are in danger, I have to go find them, and it's like, well, if you leave now, you, you're, you're going to, you know, it's, it's between, you got to choose between your friends or your destiny, it's like, could you be any more Yoda and Empire Strikes Back going on here? I mean, come on, it's not even subtle at this point, I mean, you know, like I, I always say, like, tropes, they, it's not that you repeat a trope. It's you take a trope that's been done before and you to put your own spin on it. There was no putting any other new spin on this. This was just repeating the story beats from end of Act Two of Empire Strikes Back, and that's just lazy in my opinion. <laughs> and uh, and it's it's ultimately unnecessary in my opinion. Frankly, by the end, because you know he gets he gets the staff and it's like, oh, it's all a test, wasn't it? It's like, sure, whatever. But by the end, I just, I, I was, I just kind of stopped caring about that segment. And so there's that. And then the other element that also happened in that same episode um, was uh, Tarmiriel uh, getting tested by, you know, putting herself at the mercy of the Valar, uh, going to this pool and putting herself at the mercy of this the Leviathan sea monster or whatever. And, you know, they're blowing the trumpets to, to lure the creature in, and it's, you know, she's going into the water, waiting to be sacrificed. It's like, again, this feels very much like they, someone saw Clash of the Titans, and it's like, well, let's just do that, sure. And, okay, they, she doesn't get eaten, and the kid, well, you know, and she's deemed worthy, but it's, you know, so it's a little bit different from that perspective, but the way it's presented, you can't help but wait for, you know, our Ferrazan or Elendil to say, release the Kraken, you know what I mean? So, uh, I'm sure there are other, you know, things that are familiar, uh, that are repeats from other things that have come before. I didn't want to go into episode by episode on this from Those are just the two that really stuck out uh, in my mind. So, what did you think of Rings of Power Season 2? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Disagree? Did I miss something? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate whatever audience I can get. Uh, be sure to look for my next TV review, which I'm waiting for the uh, all episodes to be uh, released for Agatha All Along, and I'll be doing my uh, full season review of that coming up soon. 
I believe we're about halfway through the uh, the episodes. I think it's going to wrap up by the end of October. And also be sure to look for my next movie review, which will be for uh, Venom The Last Dance, which also comes out uh, the last week of October, so be sure to look for that. Um, and if you like this video or any other video on my channel, please give me a like, share, and especially subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching, but just remember, there is nothing new under the sun. And yes, I have seen it before.